Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing the 12900K, as Intel's Alder Lake architecture is shaping up to be very impressive indeed, with the 12900K and some of the early results that we're going to be going through in just a moment, handily defeating the 5950X, not only in single thread, but also multi-thread as well. I also find the power consumption figures that we'll be going through, and also the heat output of this processor particularly interesting as well. But but first, just a quick word from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So the Zen 3 architecture is around a year old now, but despite the fact that Intel's architecture is much newer, we are left with a number of questions. The first is that Zen 3 is going to get kind of a shot in the arm with the Vcash solution, which is supposedly going to launch Q4 or early Q1. I've heard both, but a very reliable source is telling me that it's going to be by the end of this year. However, let's face it at this point, the end of this year is, well, rapidly approaching. The second question is also to do with Windows 10 and 11. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk at the moment on the internet regarding the performance of Ryzen processors on Windows 11, but we don't really have that much data, of course, on Old Lake in general, let alone how Windows 11 will affect things versus Windows 10. And finally, and this, of course, is a big one, how will Old Lake, well, how will Old Lake, excuse me, perform with different memory configurations. Now, of course, we've already seen some early stories of a memory kit sitting at 8,000 MTS, which is pretty damn quick in terms of megahertz. but there are other questions too, like latency. For example, let's say you got that same kit and started to really tighten the memory. How would that perform across, let's say, games and applications? Well, honestly, no one really knows at the moment. And it's going to be a fascinating thing, especially given, of course, Older Lake can, uh, can support both DDR4 and DDR5. With that out of the way, let's have a look at some of these early benchmarks. I'm going to round up and down the scores just for everyone's sanity, but the 12900K in single core result for uh, CPU-Z is scoring 830 points. Now, this is comparison to around 680 for the 11900K. So, honestly, Intel did pretty well here. They're scoring around 150 more in single core, which is very impressive. And the 5950X, meanwhile, scores around 650, as does, of course, the 5900, because, again, it's single core. Multi-core, again, on CPU-Z, though, with these results that we have from website Billy Billy, well, the 5950X does slightly edge out here. It's scoring 11,850 compared to, well, 11,450. Again, I'm rounding up and down just for everyone's sanity. So in CPU-Z, then, it seems like it's pretty much a wash in multi-thread with Zen 3 having a slight advantage, but single core score, yeah, Older Lake does come out on top quite, quite well. But things get more interesting, at least in my opinion, with Cinebench, especially when we talk about power consumption in just a moment. So, and the 12900K edges just by a tiny little bit the 5950X in multi-thread, so 10,545 versus 10,480. Now, it is extremely important to know that Ryzen processors are very sensitive to things like memory clock frequencies, timings, the settings you've got on your motherboard, PBO, you know, voltage, all of that stuff. So you can quite handily get higher results than this with Ryzen. However, given we are also dealing with very early results of Old Lake, it's fair to say that this is probably not exactly the most optimized you can get these processors. However, there has been a lot of discussion, both in terms of power consumption and heat. And I want to get into the heat first, because 
well, heat is, I guess, a byproduct of power consumption, just making things really simple. And yeah, this CPU has been getting damn toasty, over 100 degrees. However, if you actually view the original post, and if you need to use Google Translate, although, of course, Google Translate isn't 100% accurate, at least it seems to me like these figures perhaps are not the most concerning as it doesn't seem like they're using some exotic cooling like phase change or anything instead they're basically saying it's a tower however the most important thing is it doesn't seem like the clamps insert futurama meme here are actually attached in other words there's no downward pressure or, or mounting pressure to use the correct term on the cpu so basically it seems like it's essentially just resting on top of the ihs there wasn't really any mention at least in the google translate version that i can see in regards to let's say thermal paste used and that type of thing but i'm going to assume that they just didn't put it metal straight on top of the ihs because that would be a bit silly but of course without uh proper mounting pressure temperatures aren't exactly going to be the best just generally speaking like right? this is pretty well established so i think these early tests where people are freaking out about heat output i wouldn't really pay too much attention at the moment well plus of course it's still very early so we don't know all of the settings being used because again this is a leak so let's talk about power consumption because power consumption is perhaps the more interesting topic here um, because basically when AVX2 instructions are running like heavy AVX2 it seems that the CPU is hitting 250 watts now obviously that's not exactly conducive to low thermals but again because we are having the tests done in such a condition where the, there's no mounting pressure it's still quite early to know this is my kind of theory without knowing because I don't have one of these processes but yeah i mean it's kind of like if you have like a 5950x or like a 10900k or anything like that like you're not going to want to just use the bog standard like cheapest cooler you can of course you're going to want to use more of a premium cooler for obvious reasons and i will be very interested to see what the prices of the motherboards will be i am hearing that they're not going to be too uh, super cheap i've gone over the reasons behind this several times before so i'll just quickly mention it but there's a few reasons one of them is obviously the vrm solution needs to be reasonable and the second is the pcie gen 5 signaling now i'd love for someone to add more to this possibly correct it but to my understanding i've been told this by let's say a few people who will know um amd basically for zen 4 are not going to be utilizing pcie gen 5 they're going to be sticking with gen 4 and the reason behind this is basically the signaling is just a lot more expensive and so intel basically decided just to say screw it and show themselves as a tech powerhouse i'm kind of paraphrasing of course and simplifying the message here so this is possibly going to mean that the z series of boards is more expensive it's also going to be very interesting to see what type of headroom there is in overclocking i recently made a tweet on well uh, twitter that you know i love modern pc hardware i really do like screwing around with like the 6800 xt or the 3080 ti or the 10900k or 5950x you know it's fun even if you get like a budget processor it's really interesting to see what you can get out of it now and there is definitely a lot of fun to play around with like zen for example like uh, zen free architectures and do like tweaking and undervolting and kind of mess around with them however you just don't have the kind of headroom that well you used to have and there was something really dirty about having like a celeron 300a and overclocking at like 450 500 megahertz um the early venices from amd as well i know that they weren't the best i can't remember the mobile processors were i think they were 20 was it 2500m i can't remember but the venice i had i think it was like 1.8 gigahertz base and it hit over like 2.8 i think on my overclock and that was with like a bloody stock cooler and obviously you had things like the soft modding of the old radions which was really really fun um but obviously right now processors are just being and just you know electronics in general are being created so close to their bloody limits it's not super easy to kind of get that so i'm going to be very interested to see what type of headroom we have with the 12900k and of course other cpus in the old lake family it'll be fun i think it'll be i think it'll definitely be a lot of fun to play around with them and the last thing i want to discuss this is a definitely a very intel focused video but this is just a quickie 
and it concerns, um, well, Intel's graphics. Now, this is not really HPG related. Instead, this is going to be more server. But there's a fascinating patch, credit to forenix.com. I'll link their article in the video description. And I won't go through all of the patch here, but the gist is that this patch essentially enables multiple tiles to function on Linux-based operating systems, which, of course, is something that servers will predominantly use. Now, this I find very interesting because while we have already had confirmation from Intel themselves that they are going a multiple-tiled route for their you know, server GPUs, from my understanding in a way, the early gaming GPUs, of course, are only, well, basically a monolithic die. So pretty much like, let's say, RDNA 2 or Ampere or whatever. However, in the future, I'm pretty damn sure that subsequent architectures after Alchemist are going to go tile-based. I'm trying to work a little bit on an exclusive there. But yeah, I do think that Intel will be going uh, tile-based for their gaming GPUs. And I was told quite a while ago that they kind of wanted to hit, you know, <laughs> mid-range performance because they wanted to compete heavily in pricing. And I guess it kind of makes sense because this is like Intel's first foray into gaming GPUs and there's a lot of moving parts um, when it comes to creating like graphics. And it's also a lot trickier when you're talking about uh, chiplet based GPUs because there's a lot of communication of course which has to occur between chiplet A and chiplet B, just keeping things simple. And there's actually a lot of patents which are really interesting pertaining to CDNA um, two because that's chiplet based and also RDNA three that you can check out. I've covered a few of them on the channel before, but basically, you know, it's just essentially making sure that data is synchronized between different GPUs. And this can be quite difficult as well in gaming related tasks. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be very interested to see what Intel do here. Um, honestly speaking, I, I'm really hopeful for HPG. Um, it's definitely not going to be competing with the highest end cards from AMD and Intel, sorry, from AMD and Nvidia, which are out now. But uh, obviously in the future, architectures like Lovelace and RDNA 3 will probably spank it. But if it's priced right, I don't mind. And the interesting thing is too, if you look at the roadmap from Intel, you know, after um, Alchemist, it seems that they are going to be iterating quite quickly. And yeah, I, I do think that we're going to be in this really interesting situation. I actually recently put out a video um, discussing NVIDIA and just GPU plans in general. And one thing I'm told about NVIDIA is that they kind of want to go like a TikTok model. I'm not quite TikTok, but kind of similar where you have obviously the release of an architecture and then you basically improve it, either shrinking it down to a new process or just making subtle tweaks to the architecture and both or, or both excuse me and i wouldn't be surprised if we see that across the board and there's also of course now confirmation that the uh, videocards.com covered the 3090 uh, super but now basically the power connector which is hitting 600 watts um, for pcie gen uh, 5 it basically looks like it's confirmed to support 600 watts and this, of course, is going to be just really interesting for GPUs, you know, just in the future, just how we can kind of, <sighs> yeah, I, 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 personally speaking, I'm just really looking forward to the next couple of years in tech. I think it's going to, I think things are going to be changing pretty darn quickly, at least in my personal opinion. Anyway, I think I've rambled enough in this video. Let me know what you think of, well, just everything from Old Lake. Are you going to be buying one, maybe? Um, especially if you already have, like, a, a Zen 3, you're just going to be skipping it, or you're just kind of waiting. Raptor Lake, obviously, in, is uh, next year, and we still don't exactly know the release date of Zen 4, but I'm probably guessing it's going to be, like, Q3 next year. That's kind of what I'm hearing. So, yeah, are you going to jump on uh, Older Lake, or are you just going to kind of wait? With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.